It's a prank, right? Hoverboards are pranks? It's a lie. It's not like, it's not a hoverboard. They're just ugly skateboards. Like, just call a spade a spade. It doesn't make any sense to me. Hoverboards. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Back to Future 2 introduced this concept of the hoverboard. I've been dreaming of a hoverboard since I watched that movie, and that was 1989. I kind of flash forward to a couple years ago, and it's not a hoverboard. It's like a thing with a wheel. It's one thing has like a single wheel. I see people, and they're like, oh, a hoverboard. I'm like, you're not hovering. You're, it's a wheel. It touches the ground. There's no hover. I have like a huge, massive problem with them to start, just like at the very beginning, which is that they are called something that they do not do. They do not hover, so what the heck? They were on Vine a lot, actually. People use them a lot on Vine. Terrible start for a hoverboard, right? If you're starting a hoverboard with wheels, you have gone in the wrong direction. You know, the only hover real hoverboard I've seen was like this Lexus ad stunt that was done uh, in a skate park outside of Barcelona. You needed like tons of liquid nitrogen to fuel the thing to get it to, to levitate. There was like the fake Lexus hoverboard. Essentially what makes that fake is that it only works on this like specific metal ground that Lexus created and that was cooler. If it were real and like you could use it everywhere, that would be a whole thing. I'd pay a billion dollars and I'd have one today. It's like, oh, what happened to Jackie? Uh, I think she's homeless. She got a really sick hoverboard though. Like that would be my whole life. Okay. <laughs> I remember when they were getting really big, there were multiple stories that came out about hoverboards like blowing up, just became a safety concern. And that was a whole other thing. Oh my God, I forgot hoverboards exploded. I, I legitimately forgot that they exploded. I just mad at the mere concept of them. I forgot the actual dangerous detrimental things that they did. Kind of a fail, <laughs> sadly. I don't think foldable screens are worth it. I think in the long run they're gonna cause problems and they're gonna make films last for a shorter amount of time. Different companies have different reasons why they're making foldable screens. The primary reason that we're hearing a lot right now is to turn your phone into a tablet when you want it to, you know? What I don't understand about foldable screens, what is the actual like necessary aspect of them? They make the screen bigger, okay, but like we have iPads and we have tablets, like we big screens are something we already have. So I don't know why we need that, that's one. Why? Why do you? It's really for sort of power users, per se. The extra screen real estate lets you run three apps at the same time, for example. The Samsung one they recalled, it's like soft and like clearly soft in like weird places. I'm not willing to sacrifice general durability and I wouldn't even consider the phones we do use that durable like for it so that it can be slightly bigger for again, an unknown reason. Did I ask for that? Like who are they giving that to? Who needs it? I understand that it is objectively cool technology, like rolling up a screen or whatever. It's the most fragile thing in the world. You can't, you can barely look at it without even trying to like, you know, potentially damaging it. It lets in a lot of dust, like there's a lot of gaps everywhere. I do feel like they bring back a nostalgia almost of like flip phones. I think companies are under a lot of pressure to be the first at something. We were like, oh, it's, it's convenient because it's smaller. It's, it's, it's not smaller. It, it isn't. It's the same size, but in half. Theranos was the brainchild of a woman called Elizabeth Holmes. She started this company when she was 19, shortly after dropping out from, from Stanford. Their premise was that with one drop of blood, they were gonna be able to run all of these different diagnostic tests, like kind of just do a lot of blood work with just a single drop of blood. It was fake. The whole thing was fake. The tool didn't work. The, you know, they didn't ever get close to having a tool that was like testing a drop of blood in a, you know, with a little thing. They actually ended up having a, a a microwave-sized box that also didn't work. And in fact, what they were doing was getting people's blood and then sending it off to regular blood testing laboratories and then sending it back and pretending it was the little box that was doing it. And she got massive amounts of funding to pull it off. And it was this Silicon Valley darling. She was on the cover of magazines. She was really putting her name out there. She had like the iconic black turtleneck, Steve Jobs-esque look. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Elizabeth Holmes was kind of one of the first big um, female like tech founders to really make it big. And for her whole story to be a sham was like 
very disappointing for a lot of folks who are really like rooting for her. This was a lot of powerful people uh, like the DeVos family, the Walmart family, big names were invested in this company. I think Theranos really exposed how little investors sometimes have before they give money to a company. I also think that Theranos is very emblematic of the past decade or so in, in the United States and in, in the tech industry. That people can throw money at things and hope it's going to be the next you know, Apple or Facebook or, or uh, Google or something like that. And so what you see is you see capital flowing into things that are not necessarily good ideas but are just being presented as brilliant ideas. It is really disappointing, I think, because just as far as like the actual thing that they were trying to sell would have been really cool. The fact that it got to be as big of a thing as it was without anybody questioning it and then for it to fail just so spectacularly, I think would definitely qualify it for one of the worst tech products of the decade. Snapchat spectacles are the worst. Oh, they're terrible. Snapchat spectacles, I think, are so dumb. I don't think you need a pair of sunglasses to record something. I woke up like really early to get them in line when they were doing the pop-up shops. Do any of us know what Snapchat spectacles are? So I'm convinced that they only made like 15 of them, gave them to like the biggest YouTubers in the world, convinced us all that we needed them, but never really explained what they are and like never actually produced them because I've never met anyone in my life who owns them. So these are Snapchat spectacles, as you can see right here. So it's like. There's a button here, you press it, a little light goes, but the camera's here, I think. So it records like this circular video, so then it goes straight into your Snapchat archive video, whatever, that you can then upload to your story. It took a snap and that's all they did. So you knew exactly what you were getting. If you're gonna buy expensive sunglasses like that, you want them to last a while and eventually the battery on those is gonna degrade over time, so you just have to get a whole new pair. My dad got given a, several free ones at his office. They came with very, very little instructions. I do have a few other videos from my spectacles because I didn't know I was recording and I would often take videos of myself putting away the glasses and closing the case. I knew this was trendy and everyone was talking about them and um, they were only offered in limited quantities at first. So if you had them, you know, it was kind of cool to, to walk around wearing spectacles and be like, well, I got them first, you know, but I don't think I ever actually did that. I don't think I ever actually walked around wearing them. The only issue was that, yeah, it's circular video, right? Like it can only live on Snapchat, basically. No other platforms really adopted that. Most of the technology we've tried to put in glasses has not really hit off. People aren't really interested in it. This was such an embarrassing flop for Snapchat. I feel like they just tried to make one product and no one liked it. I have a butterfly keyboard, I hate it. Butterfly keyboard was Apple pushing for everything has to be thinner, everything has to be lighter. And so they made this keyboard where the keys barely go in. Tiny specks of dust, even maybe apparently just one or two specks could get underneath a key and cause it to malfunction. I have one on my laptop right now and it's constantly creating double spaces for me and weird period effects and it just makes it look like I'm a terrible typer because it screws up all of these things that I do. I actually wrote a post uh, about the butterfly keyboard. I wrote several, but one of them was written with my butterfly keyboard on my 2016 MacBook Pro. I was affected by the issue and I wrote the post without correcting any of the typos. The issue for me specifically was that my G key was not working. So try as a tech reporter writing Google without a G key. Um, it sucks. It's uh, been somewhat resolved. Apple's replacing keyboards for free. The replacement keyboards are the same butterfly keyboards. So you might be this might be happening over and over again. Apple decided to sacrifice functionality for thinness and then it became this whole scandal because an entire line of laptops were unusable because of this dumb keyboard. The uh, Apple Butterfly keyboard is certainly one of the worst pieces of tech of the decade, certainly of recent memory. An unreliable keyboard is a bad piece of tech. Google Glass was this weird thing they did in the middle of the decade or so that was supposed to put like kind of augmented reality of 
Google stuff in front of your face on glasses. It was supposed to be that you could like look out and see heads up display, but actually it was a little tiny monitor. You had to like look like this to see. And it was like useless information and it was really terrible. It wasn't ready for prime time. It was bulky. If you wore it outside, you'd look pretty, pretty weird. It was like a junk gadget that people thought would revolutionize like personal computing before it came out. And then the second it came out, everyone was like, this is really terrible. For like six months, everybody wanted Google Glass, and then everybody realized it was terrible. So nobody wanted Google Glass anymore. The biggest and worst problem with Google Glass is that you look like a moron when you wear it. And so no one's ever gonna wanna wear it. And by the way, the functionality didn't at all make up for the fact that you look like a moron. I think there was a phrase going around called like glass holes where a bunch of people in Silicon Valley, they had versions of Google Glass, they wore it out in public. Some people got punched in the face for wearing it. Silicon Valley is a weird place. Google loves building hype for their products and then not living up to it. They have a whole graveyard of discontinued products. So I think they're trying to build hype for this product they were doing and then what they actually created did not live up to the hype that they built for it. Bluetooth has always sucked. I don't like Bluetooth. Not a Bluetooth fan. A lot of times it's it'll be like, my headphones will attach to the wrong device because like I'll automatically have Bluetooth on like my laptop and my phone. So then accidentally like connect to the wrong thing and then I'll be playing music like out loud, which is unfortunate. <laughs> Bluetooth made me run a red light and it kind of scarred me. So like Bluetooth is an absolute no. Bluetooth has always been horrible. Actually kind of having nightmares in my head. Bluetooth is kind of the bane of my existence. Um, so many missed calls, so many things that never came through. And then battery life problems. Plus there's the like ecological issue of basically all Bluetooth headphones are gonna end up in a landfill. So not really pro that. It's definitely not intuitive. As someone who's not super techie, uh, it's kind of confusing where I'm like, oh gosh, how do I? The only solution I have is just turn it off, but there's gotta be an easier way to like pair things. So I do like Bluetooth headphones. Okay, no, actually as much as I like it for my headphones, I run into several issues where the connection just doesn't work or it's not recognizing my device. And it's like, that's literally your one purpose as Bluetooth to recognize my device. I don't know, I don't know why it's not better. I don't know if it's my internet connection or if it's me, but like heard this from several accounts that Bluetooth just kind of sucks. Virtual reality is the use of technology, like a headset um, to put a person into another reality, a digital world, by putting like a screen in front of their face. I was really, really excited about VR because, I mean, I tried it once and it was so cool. I feel like it's a battle. Like, there are some people that are like, VR is so awesome right now and like, why are you hating on it? And there are other people who are like, VR isn't meeting the expectation that people had. I want VR to be better so bad. I want to be able to use it with all my favorite games. Like, I just want to put it on and be in Fallout. Or like, put it on and be Red Dead Redempting. I think I wanted to use VR for something that crossed gaming, art, narrative, that was like the next great invention in storytelling. I thought it would be something like the movie. And it is not that, which is really disappointing. Hopefully it will be. It was supposed to be. It is not. I think also, VR is trying to be half gaming system slash half like 3D experience. VR, nobody really knows what it wants to be in the future, in a sense. I feel like we were promised something so much better. And now as, as more companies roll out their own VR sets, they just keep getting more convoluted. VR headsets are platform specific. You know, and that's a problem because you don't have that flexibility. You have to really stick with the same ecosystem and it's limited. It's the worst compared to its own expectations. I think the biggest disappointment for VR is, yes, it's expensive and that's prohibitively expensive for many people. Yes, it requires too much space and those are very disappointing things. But actually, if you go further and get it, it's not gonna feel worth it because I don't think you get the fully immersive experience that you really were expecting when you first tried it the first time. Phones shouldn't explode. 
So the Galaxy Note 7 is well known because it was exploding. You just don't want things exploding around you. It's a good life advice. Uh, specifically, the battery would explode. It was poorly designed. The enclosure for it was poorly designed. The battery was not reliable and it would catch fire for certain people. It was eventually, I think, banned from airplanes. Like, if you had to get Note 7, you couldn't fly with it because they were worried that the battery would explode. Exploding batteries are a deal breaker when it comes to a phone. You don't want that. No. Mm -mm. To be fair, the Note 7 debacle, it was a rel relative small amount of users that had issues. But the danger was so high that it was worth a recall. It just, the phone shouldn't explode. <laughs> I am confident that I am in the right about this. Surely there's some kind of legal problem with calling it a hoverboard when it doesn't hover. It just makes no sense to me. It's like if I started calling like my gloves shoes, they're obviously not shoes. They don't serve the purpose of shoes. It makes no sense. So that's how I feel about hoverboards. <laughs>